Awesome changes, right? But how did I make that? The answer lies in Midjourney's game-changing editor that just dropped for everyone. Today, we're exploring layers, intelligent selection tools, retexturing magic, and techniques that most creators haven't discovered yet. There's a reason this feels like cheating, and by the end of this video, you'll know exactly why. Okay, let's jump in and I'll show you how to access this beast. Once you're logged into Midjourney, and if you're not already using Midjourney, what are you waiting for? You'll see an edit tab right there in your dashboard. That's your gateway to editing heaven. But here's another cool way to get there. Say you've already got some images generated and you spot one that's almost perfect but needs some tweaking. Just click on that image and you'll see an editor button right next to the more options. If you don't see it immediately, just hit more options and tick more actions. Boom, you're in. Now that you're inside the editor, the interface is pretty intuitive. At the top, there's your prompt bar where you can type in changes you want to make. And on the right side, that's where the magic happens. All your editing tools are right there waiting for you. The beauty of this setup is that it doesn't feel overwhelming. Even if you've never touched photo editing software before, you can figure this out. It's got that mid-journey simplicity we all love, but with serious power under the hood. Of course, we start with the basics, the move and resize tool. This might sound simple, but it's super powerful. Have you ever generated a perfect image, except that the aspect ratio is wrong? Trust me, I've been there. Maybe you got something square, but you needed it for a phone wallpaper? That's 916. Or perhaps you wanted to use it as a YouTube thumbnail? Hello, 16.9. With the move and resize tool, you can now change aspect ratios on the fly. Just click on the ratio you want, or better yet, grab those handles and customize it exactly how you need it. But you know what's fun? It's possible to move your image around within that new frame. So if you're changing from square to widescreen, you can decide which part of your image takes center stage. Want to focus on the character's face? Drag it over. Want to showcase the background? Shift it the other way. There are some limits though. You can't make things infinitely large. At some point, you will find yourself unable to enlarge the original pic. This is to preserve the photo's quality. But for most practical purposes, you've got tons of flexibility. Next, we get to my favorite stuff, the paint tool. This is where you can erase parts of your image and let Midjourney fill them back in with AI magic. Let me paint you a picture here, pun intended. Say you've got this amazing samurai image, but somehow I don't like his sword. With traditional editing, you'd be stuck trying to clone stamp around it or getting into complex masking. Here, you just paint over it with the erase tool, type samurai in the prompt and hit submit. Midjourney will analyze what you've erased and generate new content that fits seamlessly with the rest of the image. We're talking about understanding lighting, shadows, perspective, the whole nine yards. It's not just filling in with random content, it's creating contextually appropriate imagery. What's more, you've also got a restore tool. This gives you a semi-transparent overlay of your original image so you can be surgical about what you remove. Maybe you want to keep part of that sword but remove the rest? The restore tool lets you paint back in specific areas with pixel perfect precision. The brush size is adjustable too, so whether you're doing broad strokes or detail work, you're covered. And if you mess up, there's undo and redo, plus a complete reset option if you want to start fresh. All right, prepare to have your mind blown by the Smart Select feature. This tool is like having an AI assistant that can understand what objects are in your image and select them for you. We're talking about the kind of selection accuracy that used to take professional editors hours to achieve. Here's how it works. You click on an object and Midjourney's AI analyzes the edges, lighting, and context to figure out exactly what you're trying to select. Want to select a person? Click on them. Want to grab a building? Click on it. The AI does the heavy lifting of tracing those complex edges. But wait, it gets better. Once you've made your selection, you can either erase the selected object or erase everything except the selected object. This means you can instantly cut out backgrounds, remove unwanted elements, or isolate subjects for compositing. Let me give you a real world example. Say you've got a character in a scene, but you want to change the entire background. Smart select the character, choose erase background, and boom, your character is now floating on a transparent background. Then you can prompt Midjourney to generate a completely new environment around them. The accuracy isn't always 100% perfect. AI is still AI, but it's honestly impressive how well it works, especially on clear, well-defined objects. And even when it's not perfect, you can always use the paint tools to clean up any rough edges. Things start getting serious from here. The layers system in Midjourney's editor is something I didn't expect to see this early in the AI editing game. 
We're talking about true layer-based editing, just like you'd find in professional software. Here's the deal. You can add multiple images as separate layers, either by uploading files or pasting URLs from other images. This means you can create complex compositions by combining different AI generations, stock photos, or even your own artwork. I will demonstrate it with a real-world example. I've got this old samurai photo that I love, especially the hairstyle, but I also generated another version with this amazing new background. Problem is, this new version has a completely different hairstyle that I'm not crazy about. So here's the challenge. I want that stunning new background but with the original traditional hairstyle. This is exactly where layers become your best friend. First, I'll start with my new background image as the base. Then I head down to the bottom left. This is where the magic happens. I can click add and choose add from file. I'm going to add my original samurai photo with the hairstyle I want to keep. The original photo gets added as a new layer on top of my background. You'll see it listed as layer 1 in the panel. At this point, the original photo is completely covering my new background, but watch what happens next. I grab my eraser tool and carefully erase everything around the hairstyle I want to keep. I'm basically revealing the new background underneath while preserving just the hair portion from the original image. It's like digital surgery. I can be super precise about what stays and what goes. The key is working with different brush sizes. I'll use a bigger brush to quickly erase large areas I don't want, then switch to a smaller brush to carefully trace around the hairline. The goal is to seamlessly blend the old hairstyle into the new scene. Once I've got my composition set up, new background showing through with the original hairstyle, I can submit the edit. The feature is not perfect. You might notice some weird traces or artifacts left over from your layer work. Maybe there's a bit of the old background still clinging around the hairline. Don't worry though, this is totally normal. Here's where you become the cleanup crew. Grab that erase tool again and carefully paint over any funky areas that didn't blend right. Then submit another edit and let Mid Journey take another crack at fixing those spots. Remember, when you generate, you're flattening all those layers into one final image. Think of layers as your staging area where you set up the perfect composition, then let the AI work its magic to blend everything naturally. It's like having a professional photo compositor right at your fingertips. Finally, let's talk about what might be the most powerful feature in this entire editor, retexturing. This tool is absolutely wild, and I think a lot of people are going to sleep on it because they don't fully understand what it can do. Here's the concept. Retexturing takes your existing image and uses it as a composition guide to generate a completely new image. It's like having a magical style transfer plus layout preservation tool that can transform your artwork while keeping the basic structure intact. Let me break this down with an example. I have created this stunning image of Elsa and Batman standing side by side. Characters, objects, backgrounds are all on point, but the overall style isn't quite right. Maybe I want it to be more Disney-like? With retexturing, you can type in a new prompt describing the style you want. Hit Submit Retexture, and Midjourney will generate new versions that keep your composition but apply the new aesthetic. Cool, huh? Now you can turn a painting into a photograph or transform a modern scene into something vintage. The suggested prompt feature is pretty handy too. Midjourney will analyze your image and suggest descriptive text that you can then modify. This gives you a starting point if you're not sure how to describe what you see. But here's the pro tip. Retexturing works best when you do your main edits first, then retexture as a final step. Think of it as the icing on the cake rather than the foundation. Get your composition right, get your elements positioned correctly, then use retexturing to nail the final aesthetic. That's a bit overwhelming, right? No worries. I'll walk you through a real workflow that showcases how powerful this system can be when you combine all these features. We'll start with a basic AI generation and transform it into something completely custom. First step, generate your base image in mid-journey. Let's say it's a character portrait, but you want to place them in a specific environment. Use the Smart Select tool to isolate your character, then erase the background. Next, add a new layer with your desired background. This could be from another AI generation, a stock photo, or even a photo you took yourself. Position your character where you want them using the Move and Resize tools, then fix any problem with the Erase tool. Then you can use retexturing to transform the entire composition, so you prefer Pixar art style or 1980s anime style. The retexture tool lets you make these broad stylistic changes while preserving all your careful composition work. 
But hold your horses, we're not quite done yet. Again, both layering and retexturing features are not a magic make it perfect button. You'll probably notice some areas that didn't quite nail the new style, or maybe some weird artifacts popped up during the transformation. Grab that trusty erase tool and clean up any wonky spots that didn't retexture properly. Paint over those problem areas and submit another edit to let the AI take another swing at it. I know, this workflow might sound complex, but it's absolutely worthwhile. Once you get the hang of it, you can create images that would be virtually impossible to achieve through prompting alone. We're talking about a level of control that puts AI art creation on par with traditional digital art workflows. After spending hours playing with these editor tools, I got some insights for myself and I want to share them with you guys. These aren't things you'll find in the official documentation, but they'll save you time and frustration. First tip, and this one's huge, work from broad to specific. Start with your major composition changes, aspect ratios, and large element placement. Then dive into those detailed edits and refinements. Trust me, the editor absolutely loves it when you build up your image in logical steps rather than bouncing around like a pinball machine. Second, don't be afraid to iterate, and I mean go wild with it. The generation system gives you four options every time you submit, and you can always go back to previous versions. This means you can explore different directions without losing your work. Think of each generation as a branch in your creative tree, so go ahead and branch out. Third, pay serious attention to your prompts, folks. The AI editor responds to descriptive language just like regular mid-journey generation, but even more so. Want specific lighting? Tell it exactly what you want. Craving a particular mood or atmosphere? Paint that picture with words. The more context you give this thing, the more it'll blow your mind with results. Fourth, edge cleanup is absolutely your best friend. After major edits, always check the edges of your image for any weirdness or artifacts. A quick pass with the erase tool around the borders can clean up tons of issues and make your final image look seriously professional. You could say you're really edging toward perfection. Sorry, I had to. And here's a big one that'll change your game. Experiment with different version settings. You can switch between mid-journey versions and even use Niji for anime style content. Different versions have have totally different strengths, so don't lock yourself into just one approach. Variety is the spice of AI life. The AI art revolution just got a massive upgrade, and you're now equipped to be part of it. I can't wait to see what you create with these tools. Seriously, I will be there when you make something awesome because this community constantly blows my mind. Want to try these amazing AI yourself? All links and resources are awaiting you in the description. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye!